Suppose a lottery is won by selecting the correct four numbers from 26 in the order in which they were selected. What is the probability of winning? So we're selecting four numbers, so I'm going to start with four spaces. So for the first number, if we have 26 numbers that we can pick from, there's 26 possibilities. Okay, after that, now there's 25, and 24, and 23. So by the fundamental theorem of counting, this is a sequence of events, we're going to multiply all this together. Okay, so 26 times 25 times 24 times 23, so 358,800 ways to do this. Okay, but before we complete that problem, we need to ask ourselves a pretty important question. If I were to switch two of the numbers, would that change the number? So let's just say it's a little sided example here. Let's say the winning numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's just say that's what they are. Is, let me switch them, 2, 1, 3, 4 the same? So if you look back at the problem, it says we have to select the correct numbers in the order in which they were selected. So 2, 1, 3, 4 is not the same as 1, 2, 3, 4. So the order matters. So because the order matters, there are no repetitions of these numbers. So this is called a permutation. So the order matters. And so that's our answer. In this next example, we have a company that is under suspicion of age discrimination. Of 25 employees, the five oldest employees have been terminated in the last six months. What is the probability of this occurring randomly? So again, the first thing you want to do is count out how many things you have. So of 25, we're picking five of them. So the first employee that could be fired, there's 25 of them, so 25 for the first one. You're not going to fire the same person twice, so now there's 24, then 23, then 22, then 21. So if I the fundamental theorem of counting, we're going to multiply all that together. And this gives us 6,375,600 ways for this to happen. Okay, now here's your big question. We need to ask, does the order matter? So let's say A, B, C, D, and E were terminated. Let's say that's who the five people were. Is, let me just switch two of them. Is B, A, C, D, E the same? So if you look back at the question, it says the five oldest employees. So if these are the five oldest employees, does it matter the order in which they were fired? No, this is the same. They're just saying that five of the employees were the oldest. It doesn't say in which order they were fired. So this is the same. So this means that order does not matter. So order does not matter, which makes this a combination. But if you switch two things, you're going to get the same thing. So that means that we need to divide the repeats. So I had five people, so I need to divide out these five. So there's five ways to arrange that first person, then four, then three, then two, then one. So we're going to divide this by essentially five factorial, which is 120. Okay, so 6,375,600 divided by 120 gives us 53,130 ways for these five employees to be terminated. So then the follow-up question is, what is the probability of this occurring randomly? So 1 out of 53,130 really, really small number. So we're at about 0 .0000 
So the chance of this happening randomly is really, really small. It appears on the surface that there is some age discrimination here, because that shouldn't have happened. Okay, let's look at this next one here. So let's say we have 40 members on the board of directors for an institution. Part A, if they must elect a chairperson, a first vice chairperson, a second vice chairperson, and a secretary, how many different ways can these candidates be selected? So again, the first thing you want to do is mark out how many things you have. So we have four different positions. For the first position, there's 40 members, so there's 40 people up for that. One person not going to have the same position, so now there's 39, then 38, then 37. So by the fundamental theorem of counting, we multiply the sequence together. And we get 2,193,360 ways to do this. So then the big question you always need to ask yourself when you're doing problems like this is let's say A, B, C, and D fill these positions. So that means that A is the chairperson, B is the first first vice chairperson, C is the second, and D is the secretary. So is, let me switch the first two, B, A, C, D the same. So if B is the chairperson and A is the first vice chairperson, is that the same? No, it's not. By switching those two, you switch the position. So you end up with something different. So the order matters. The order in which these people were selected and elected to their position matters. So this is an example of a permutation. So there are no repeats. We don't need to divide by anything. Okay, part B, same idea, but this time we're just forming a subcommittee of four members. So they don't have a specific position that they've been given. We're just putting four people together to make a committee. So with that being the case, how many different ways can these candidates be selected? So still we have four people. There's still 40 people to pick from for the first one, and then 39, then 38, then 37. So everything starts out the same way. So you start out with a permutation. And then you ask yourself the follow-up question of, does the order matter? So for example, let's say A, B, C, and D are on the committee. So A, B, C, and D are on the committee. Is, let me just switch two of them, B, A, C, D, the same? Well, yes. doesn't matter the order in which you put them in the committee. They're all doing the same thing. They have the same kind of position. So this is the same because the order does not matter. So because the order does not matter, this is an example of a combination, which means that we have to go one step further. We need to divide by the amount of repeats that we have. So if I have four people, then I have four ways to mark them out. So four ways for the first one, three, and then two, then one. In other words, 4 factorial. So I'm going to divide that out by 24. We get a smaller number. We have 91,390 ways to make a subcommittee of four members.